Hey, what's up, boxers? This is Zach Rezet with BuildBox. In this video, I'm going to show you how I created a Geometry Dash inspired game that I'm just going to give out as a template. I'm going to get the download link here in the description so that you can play it and mess around with it yourself. But yeah, so this is the game that we have set up here and I created for you. And you can see that it's, you know, it's very different from Geometry Dash. There's a lot of little differences, but it was definitely inspired by Geometry Dash. So the idea of taking the cube and doing a little rotation on the jump that was something that I took from the game and I thought was cool and then I added my own twist so the twist in geometry dash is a 90 degree rotation or a 90 degree spin but this one I have the character do a full flip and then I also have the character being able to jump twice instead of once so let's go ahead and I'll give this to you for free and then let's jump into how I created this game so first I just want to kind of go over the game's simple structure. So for those of you who don't know, this is your game mind map here. So this is basically the structure for your whole game. You have your game start and then the, your player jumps into a 3D world. The player is defeated, which sets off the game over event observer. It sends them to the game over UI where they can then hit the restart button and it's going to send them back to their 3D world and then they can repeat. So I have a few little things here that help out with that. In the opening event animation here, we've got a little bit of an opacity change. So you'll see this white image turn to invisible here in 20 frames total. And so that's going to immediately start off the game. So when I press the play button right now, watch how it fades in. And that's the first thing you'll see is you'll see a white screen and then it's going to fade in. So see right there, it's just a real subtle, it's nothing major. You barely even notice it, but it's a nice way to jump into the game. Okay, and then I'll exit out of that. And then back here in the game over UI, we have an idle motion where you can see the, the restart button gets bigger and smaller. And we've got that. And then also on the open animation, it goes from this is your regular 3D world. And then once the game over event observer is set off and this open animation is triggered, it's going to turn white. And then the restart button is going to show up so that you can click it and you can restart your game. So, and then the last thing is that we want, we don't actually have a close animation on this. We just have the fade to white or the white fading into the game. And so that's how you jump back into the game. Okay, now let's take a look at the 3D world itself. And you can see here where there's different scenes for our game and you can create different levels for your game. And that's, this is a huge part of the game development process. So this is your starting scene. This is where your player here starts off and then the character starts moving, collects a couple coins, and then it's going to randomly choose one of these scenes here. We've got about six scenes from you to choose from here. And I recommend definitely copying these scenes or taking a couple scenes that you like, and then you can duplicate them by selecting your scene down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to hit, uh, let's go ahead and I'll select number six here. And then I'll hit D on my keyboard right now. I'll hit D and it duplicates the scene. And so six and seven now, scene six and seven are now the same. And so you, if you want to just slightly, you know, move things around or whatever, and then kind of make, make it your own, you can totally do that. And so I would definitely experiment with taking a few of these scenes and then building them off, or you can just build your own scenes from scratch too. It's totally up to you. And one other cool thing I want to show you, and this is a big part of the reason why I wanted to go over this with you, is because some of you might be wondering, okay, so you've got this character that's jumping, but how did you achieve the flip? And there's probably multiple ways to do this, but I'll just show you how I did it. So I took the jump limit. I'm going to go here into my main character's node map real quick. I'm going to show you this. But I took the jump limit node that I created, and I showed you that in some past videos, and I'll include the link to the past videos where I use the jump limit and create the jump but so you can see how to do it yourself but um, what I did is I added some angular velocity to this jump limit so that not only does the character jump with a certain force and it's got a limit in place but it's also got a little bit of a spin along the z-axis so let me go ahead and I'll crack open this jump limit node and I'll show you what I did it's honestly it's three lines of code I mean this is it is simple as can be and then now you can all use this you can have this jump node and you can use it for your other characters and it's already got a jump limit and angular velocity built in and I'm gonna just keep 
building off this jump node until it gets better and better and better. And I hope that you do the same. And it's just adding in little bits of code, little tweaks here and there, and that's how you do it. So, okay, I've shown how to do this before, but I'll, I'll kind of go over this again. So the first thing I needed to do is I needed to add an attribute. All right, and I added it a vector 3D. And this is so that it covers X, Y, and Z axis, which you need for angular velocity. And especially you need it for this set angular velocity, okay? Because you need to be able to cover all different, the X, Y, and Z axes. You need to be able to uh, cover all three of them. So I added this attribute, I named it angular velocity. And then the first thing I, you do is you create a variable and I just named it ang vel because it's short for angular velocity and then i set that angular velocity to whatever numbers i put in for this angular velocity attribute so whatever numbers i put in here it's now associated with this ang vel variable okay so that's one line of code and then that's two lines of code and i guess you could this isn't really code, but this is one other step. So that's like three steps. And then the last thing I did, I mean, it's really, really simple. I just used the set angular velocity function. And I pulled this from our Buildbox API, our JavaScript API, so that you can use this to help yourself out and to help yourself with coding. So I just grabbed the set angular velocity and I put in the uh, angvel coordinates for x y and z and so it's going to set the angvel it's going to set the angular velocity for the x direction and for the y direction it's going to set it to zero because i've got zeros in in for those two but for the z direction i've got negative 5.9 and that's what creates the rotation so let's say i do two backslashes, right? And I just get rid of that line of code. And just so you know, that's commenting out some code when you do those double backslashes, all right? And then you press play, and then now I got no more jump, no rotation. I mean, I have the jump, just no rotation. So just adding that one line of code is going to do it. So I'll exit out of this preview. So I'll go back, I'll get rid of the backslashes and bring it back into action. I'll preview again. And then now we have our flip again and it's pretty cool. And you might want to mess with the flip so that it lands, you know, directly on the on its face. Um, you can also do 90 degree rotations, 180, 360, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, so I thought this was cool. So I did that in one, two, three lines of code, and then a little bit here. And I always try to kind of compete with Nick. I want to see if I can do it in a more efficient way or as, as efficiently as possible. And then Nick usually comes in and tells me, oh yeah, I actually have a more sophisticated and more elegant way of putting it together. <laughs> but I'm working on it. I'm trying, I'm trying the coding out. It's a lot of fun so I really I really want you all to kind of mess around with the code as well you don't have to uh, the whole point of this is uh, the whole point of other people putting in code is so that you can use these nodes without having to code yourself but it's kind of fun you know it's kind of fun to mess around with the code a little bit so let's talk about a little bit more around this 3d world um, basically our point system is these coins and you can see that the coin label is up towards the top when you're playing the game you see the one two three there and I'll show you how to add a coin label real fast so you go to your mind map and then you go to your 3d world UI and I got my coin label right here you just toss in a label right here you just drag this in drop it in and then you set the settings over here and you can see the settings I've got set up here and so if you want to do the same type of coin label you can or you can just take the BB doc and use it yourself and then as far as enemies, I just have spikes. That's the only enemies in this game right now. So you can totally add some more enemies. What I would do, you know what I think would be cool, is if some of you were to go over here to the asset library, go to the assets, and maybe use a couple of these spike enemies. Because I think that would be cool too. Um, I think it would be nice to have a few of those floating around. Because all, all we have right now is just these little spikes. And they're somewhat of a challenge, but really not that threatening. And then we've got some platforms. So we've got some points, we've got some enemies, we've got some platforms to jump over. So those are kind of like obstacles. And then I threw in some decorations here. So I did some rotating uh, hexagons and some squares and triangles and got a couple balls and stuff. And you can see here, let's go ahead, I'll delete this background so you can see. These are all just kind of floating in there and they're just there for decoration. They don't do anything else. So I'm gonna hit Command Z to bring that background back. And yeah, and it, it does look, honestly, in my opinion, it looks a little bit 
bit childish. It looks kind of uh, with all these like shapes and all these different colors. It's kind of a, like a rainbow or whatever. But I'm just gonna own it. I'm just say, hey, look, this is this is the style I made it in. It's kind of kitty, but you you can totally change that real fast. You can get rid of these decorations, add in your own decorations. You can add in some like spikes, make it look more threatening. You can do all sorts of stuff. So this is kind of a quick breakdown, a quick rundown on how this was all created. Um, th there's a lot goes on here in the main character. Um, it's actually pretty simple though. Um, you've got, you're touching the screen, it's going to perform the jump. If you collide with the platform, it's going to reset the jump so that you can jump twice again. Um, if you collide with any enemies, then it's going to defeat the character, play an explosion animation, there's gonna be a short delay, and then the game over event observer is set off. And that's going to allow you to restart the game. So it's pretty simple. It, this is a pretty simple uh, template. It's nothing groundbreaking or anything like that, but I thought it could be useful and you can use it to kind of build off of. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you get a lot of use out of this template. Keep an eye out for more videos coming this week. I'm going to build out some more characters and I'm going to share them with you and it's going to be pretty cool. So keep an eye out for the next video. And as always, boxers, keep on boxing.